Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hank. This is episode 114. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hank. That's H Y M P E. It's Hank. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. Introduce yourself to the audience. You already know what time it is, man. It's your boy Amari J, man, from the Bay Area, man, California, man. Shout out to Hype. Copy that. International Hank, not just a hashtag, it's a way of life. Let's hit the rundown now. Keep telling y'all, things be happening over here. Custom Hustle World, if you're watching the video right now on the E-Block Radio Network, what you are seeing is the air, you know what I'm saying, the Custom Hustles, the twos, the CH2s. This is the second version of the sneakers. These are available in any color. You know what I'm as you can see, Custom Hustle all over the joints. But available in any color and up to a 14 for you Bigfoot brothers. So you get at me at Custom Hustle World on Instagram. It's at Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We do custom sneaks, jerseys, jackets, T-shirts. Uh, we got the shorts. The hats should be landing this week. By the time this episode come out, the hats should be in. Um, but we doing it all over here at Custom Hustle World. Get your shorts, get your jerseys, get your jackets. I own the outfit. It's not just something that I say. It's something that I mean. Um, that is now. Follow my cleaning company at H2H Cleaning. It's Instagram only. If you make it worth my while, we will slide right out there to the Bay Area and get a Mario J situation all the way together. We're doing roofing, plumbing, HVAC, flooring, carpeting, <laughs> cleanups, clean outs, and remodeling. You get right yep. with us at H2H Cleaning and let us know how we can help. Because <laughs> we're always here to help. Now, I'll- E-Block Radio Network every Monday, 12, 2 o'clock on the E-Block Radio Network, the exclusive home of the video of the How to Hustle podcast. My hype. GFT Radio Network every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Then we go Wednesday, 216 to blend. That is 12 midnight, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Friday, I say podcast radio network, 10 a.m. We ride open for the rest of the rest of the week, y'all. You know what I'm saying? We can love to get some of those local situations. LA, we need something out there, bro. You got somebody out there who got a situation. Let's tie that whole thing together. You know what I'm saying? We'll send them some uh we'll send them some merchandise and all of that to make sure we tighten up the whole situation. Now, <laughs> episode right. 114. This is a spotlight episode, y'all. Me and Amari have been trying to make this episode happen for about eight months now. <laughs> we jumped on one day. The connection was horrible. So we just sat there, talked, got to know each other a little bit better. So now this is a spotlight episode specifically and basically all about what he's got going on, who he is and all of that for those who know or don't know. So Mari J, talk to us. If somebody is tuning into the How to Hustle podcast. We have their brand new listener. Appreciate you hitting the button. We only accept five stars, not four. <laughs> Let them know who Amari J is. Yeah, man, I appreciate you, man. Uh, just a young young brother out here in the Bay Area, man, out of the Bay Area, California, man, uh, entrepreneur, artist, um, uh, 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 community activist, um, rapper, singer, uh, pop artist, um, hip-hop artist, uh, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, man. So, you know, we just, uh, we just, we're trying to do it big, man. Versatile is what I'm hearing. In those in the statements that you just gave up for your intro, uh, which is how we ended up here, how we ended up talking and how we making this happen in the episode. I love somebody who has multiple situations going on, like like minded individuals. And you see my run down as long as I got a lot going on. So now something that you hit me about and you was talking about this. You brought Nipsey up a few times Uh, when Nipsey passed. The joint hit me crazy because I'm like. Man, the shit that he's doing is something that I would do. My man just come home. I'm out trying to get him some bread together, get him an outfit. Or like That's something that I would be out doing. And it was like, damn, with too much going on, like he had to even put yourself in a bad situation, but you don't even realize that you're in a bad situation because you just doing what you do. It's just something that's second nature. Uh, community activist, something that you threw out in there too. Talk to us a little bit about that community activist work and all of that. Tying it in because I got... Excuse me, I kind of ram- rambled and messed this one up because when you said it to me, you tied it in with the Nipsey situation, which is why I brought it up. Talk to me about how the Nipsey situation affected you and led you into doing the community activist work. My bad. Yeah, man, no problem, man. Uh, so basically around 2019, I had met Black Sam, which was uh, Nipsey, which is Nipsey Hustle Blood Brother, the, um, the one that's in control of the marathon clothing now. Um, so Black that. Sam... Yeah, so Black Sam, he always been around, of course. Um, 
uh, I'm from the Bay Area, so, you know, we not from L.A., you know what I'm saying? We not Bloods and Crips in the Bay. We we bang blocks and, and things like that, you know, it's a different outlook on the hood aspect of the Bay versus L.A., so, you know, I'm an outsider coming in, but I got ties to, you know, a lot of people in L.A., uh, entertainers, um, music producers, um, Bloods, Crips, whatever, um, you know, down to anybody you could think of. So my whole thing was, let me get to Nip. I got to get to Nip so I could holler at him. And I feel like that's one of the only people that actually hear me out. And I know I could get to him. So my whole thing was always trying to get to Nip. And I, uh, for some reason, every time I came to the store, he was never there. You feel me? So I guess I was going at the, at the wrong times missing him. But like I said, one time I caught his brother, Black Sam, uh, seen him outside. We hollered for a minute, gave him my CD. Um, and, he, you know, he was saying some motivational things and just real respectful dude. He motivated me more. So I felt like from that day we was going to put something together. Uh, sadly, shortly after that, Nip passed. And, um, you know, I, I haven't heard anything from, you know, any of uh, the All Money In team since I wouldn't expect to since that happened. But, um, you know, now I see them back rolling. So we trying to uh, put it back together. I'm trying to get with them and, and make a movement for the whole California. Marathon continues for sure. Talk to us a little bit about the community work that you are doing, though. Like you said, you're trying to ultimately your goal was to tie it in with them. Unfortunately, not able to happen. But let's talk about some of the stuff that you are doing in the community. Before yeah, man. So, you know, we got the voice of the youth out here in the Bay Area, man. That's um something that I'm, I'm working on just to get these kids a voice. It's really just a community based um type of thing where, you know, um we want to get these kids uh, the awareness and, and, and spread change and spread positivity. But um, other than that, uh, I actually actively go into the school districts and uh, try to help these kids. Um, you know, I was inspired by Nipsey to do that. And I feel like, you know, uh, you know, that's that's what Nip wanted. So, you know, I'm teaching these kids financial literacy, ownership, uh, de-escalation, not to start tripping off a of little stuff. We trying to lower the violence. We trying to stop the killing, man. You know, we, we can't let us phase out. What's your target age for that? Like, what's the school ages? Or what's like middle school? We talk high school. We talk elementary. Where we going? Yeah, we got middle school, high school. Uh, I've worked with middle school, high school, um, and even above that a little bit. You know, probably about to age like 25. Oh, okay. Um, what's the response? What's the response from them? Because that's one of my big things is I was always one of the people who was like, man, you ain't going to be able to reach them. So what's the point? Then we got to the point where we started hitting like 400 and 500 bodies out here. So it was like, you can't just sit on the sideline and do nothing. Even if you're only going to get one young boy, all right, it's better to get one and get two than don't get nobody. So uh, that was one of the very first, I think, episode, maybe like seven of the podcast might have been with my nephew, just talking about things that we can do as the old heads to help the young boys. Or what do y'all look up to? What are y'all aspiring to do? Like, what are the things y'all listen to? What's some of the feedback that you're getting out there on that aspect? Well, you know, I, I, I I'm not an OG, so that's probably where I get more, um, more support. Um, I got a music career. I got, I can show y'all where I was at and where I'm at now. And it's been being perceived well. Um, one, because wait, wait, of- hold, hold on, hold on. My, let me, don't, all right, so let me not, don't lose me in the in the, the translation. What I'm saying there is, just because I ain't even talking, like we ain't talking streetwise, we just talking, you talking to kids or you, you got a program that's talking to kids. So you know, some of them things register with, some of them it don't. That's why I'm saying, yeah. what's the, push and pull that you got on that aspect of it. Not even saying that you're telling it, like you said, you're trying to teach them financial literacy, business, all of those type of things, all the things that we need to be having as a course in 12th grade across the country. Right. Cause that's the stuff right. that you really need to know. This is the stuff that gets real when you about to go to college or when you're right. in college or right after college. Like these are the things that they really need to be teaching like voter exactly. registration and how to vote and all of that type of stuff. That's what 12th grade should be. But right. You, like you said, you're hitting all of those different age demographics from shit. You said from uh, middle school to 25. So we talking 10 to 25, which is a lot of your years of molding and shaping who the hell you're going to be in your 30s. Right, right, right. I say 
the music uh, has the biggest influence. You know, everybody wants to focus on uh, some form of yeah, yeah, as some form of negativity, which is what some things might be promoted as to certain people in some of the music, right? So it's like that's where the negativity come and lock them in. So then we spread the positivity after they locked in. You know, you, just like Nip said, you got to be so hood at first to get their attention. Then once you got their attention, then you spread the positivity. So I'll say just off of the music alone and the career and the, the uh, I, you know, I make the music that the, that the new generation likes. You know what I'm saying? So that, so it's, uh, I'll say it's mostly based off of that, like as far as locking them in. Like, okay, I'm, I'm going to listen to you. You get what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. you have some type of a, of a, you know, influence, you know, fame influence. You get what I'm saying? They can see it right there in front of them. In those ages and stages, they want to see it. You could tell them yeah. anything, but if you can't show them something, then yeah, they ain't listening. I understand. Copy. Because I got a lot of stuff that these rappers got. You get what I'm saying? So, And I've done a lot of things. I've made it to heights that a lot of artists still, you know, have not made it to. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's what I'm saying, too. Just all of that can inspire somebody. It, you know, my failures is, are being used as an example to inspire other people and and good things too you know failures and successes but i use also my failures i hold my failures in a high regard too because you got to move on and show people how you can re- rebuild and regroup and, and bounce back so this is one thing that i always want people to like pay attention to though like you said you in here and you're talking to them about look i'm doing this video i got this music i got all of these different things going on but the thing that i always say i loved about I love about LeBron and his squad is they dominate the game beyond LeBron getting 30. Like you can have the best lighting in the world and be the boy who runs lights from here to Africa and be a millionaire. You could be the best boy who's the producer. You could be the best boy who was the choreographer. You can be so many different things that you don't have to be the boy on the camera to dominate right. these different situations. If you think about it, like you said, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, from a revenue generating standpoint, from a business aspect. And that's the thing that like, I'd be wanting people to pay attention to all of it. Don't just pay attention to the one guy who's standing here, like in the, in the shot, who's getting the money shot. Who's the boy. Everybody ain't going to be the boy. Just to always say like, it's perfectly fine being one of the St. Lunatics and not being Nelly. Like it's perfectly, yeah, right. perfectly fine being one of flip mode and not being Buster. Like, exactly. But, Especially if you use those situations while you're in them situations, it's nothing wrong with us using each other as long as we both benefit from it. If we don't have right. a, if we're not using each other for beneficial situations, then we got an issue. But if we're using each other, like, no, nah, he's great at lighting. He's going to make sure that this shot looks good. He's going to make sure that everything is taken care of on a set. And people is important. I want want people to realize that while they're young, like if you get in them businesses and them opportunities and them spaces while you're young. You don't have to be the ball spitting the 16. Like everybody ain't gonna be that ball. But there's so many different ways to dominate the game. Just want people to notice that. Like facts, facts. Many different ways, man. You gotta, you know, stay inspired and stay motivated. That's the biggest thing that's gonna take you anywhere. A million ways to hustle, man. A million ways to hustle. Right. Hustle, don't, hustle don't mean we standing on the corner and we trapping. Like oh, it's not no. that's what you if that's what you think it means, then you need to broaden your uh, horizons. Exactly. <laughs> Whoever's exactly. listening to this. Now, exactly. uh, we talked a little bit about the community situation. Now, let's go into the music a little bit. I know you you got a long catalog and a long variety of things that you've done in the music industry. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, man. Um, you know, from working with Ray J to um, Chris Brown's people, <clears throat> uh, uh, selling a song to Chris Brown, um, you know, being um, in 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 a lot of meetings and stuff like that with Atlantic Records, having a deal with Warner Music Group for a while, um, working with Warner Music Group as an A and R for a while, um, all types of stuff. So you know, um, just just everything in the music industry, I basically have my hand in. Um, you know, except maybe like the countryside of the industry um everything else i I pretty much had my hand in um you know i got to meet the people that wrote for whitney houston and michael jackson so um you know it's it's been a it's been a crazy ride but a blessing all right so you know people 
So you said you and you and Ray J got the song. What's the song that you and Ray J got? People gonna listen to this joint and go, man, this boy ain't really got no song. Ray J throw it out there for him so we can shut him right up. Yeah, no, man, it's called New Lifestyle, man, featuring Ray J, man. We uh did that in 2013, but it's 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 out for sure. Copy that. Now you said you had some work with Chris Brown's folks. You moved the you moved the song to them. Which joint was that? Yeah, me and Bobby Love. We uh. People could, get a, people could get a taste, my bad. People could get a taste for your pen game because you know what I'm saying you said I'm selling a song and I'm doing the AR work again, more ways than one to hustle these situations. You know what I'm saying? Back, Let them back, know what your back. pen game was like. Yeah, man. Uh me and Bobby Love, we did a song called Episode, and uh we uh he ended up selling it to Chris Brown later on, but he wrote a lot of songs for Chris Brown and stuff like that. We just collaborated. Uh, on a couple songs ourselves, but uh, he wrote "Post to Be" and all types of songs uh, for Marion, mm-hmm. Janae, Echo, Fifty Cent, all types of people. So, um, yeah, uh, we did the song. It's called "Episode," and then uh, he sold it to. Actually, I think he sold it to E Forty, and Chris Brown uh, got on it. You get what I'm saying? So, uh, with with Ti, Ti on there too. So, um, yeah, that that was a monumental moment. Copy that. That's what I'm saying. You you know people like people gonna come for you. People come for your situations. I always tell them I'm, I'm locked loaded and prepared, baby. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. Thanks. I ain't yeah, telling yeah. you nothing that ain't real. Yeah, nah. You uh, I got receipts for everything, man. You could go check that out. Uh, it's on YouTube. We we uh what's online? Whatever. We ended up releasing the song later on. Uh, the original version of the song. We ended up releasing it later on. Uh, you know, just to put it out. You feel me? All right, so you also said, though, I'm doing some A&R work now. Are you looking for some artists? Are you producing artists? Talk to us about that end of the business. Um, I've got some things going on, but it's mostly with the youth. I'm trying to get, um, you know, it, it depends. It depends. Like, I try to get the younger artists, you know what I'm saying? So I, I do uh, I've song written for a lot of artists. I produce for a lot of artists. I work with a lot of artists. I, I'm not necessarily into the A and R side of it right now any longer. That was when I was with Warner Music Group, so I was under their company doing A and R work. You get what I'm saying? But um, me personally, I do A and R work, but um, it's 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 not something I'm like uh trying to take on too much. You know what I mean? Right now, uh, later on, no, for sure. I was about to say, because, you know, I got some niggas, I got some niggas all over. You know what I'm saying? You like mm-hmm. West Coast, you like them Southern, you like producers, you like artists, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the yeah, national for sure. hype is not just a hashtag, this is the way of life. <laughs> yeah, for sure, no, for sure, yeah. So now, tell me this, though, you got anything in the works, you got anything we about to bring out, we got anything we putting out, like, talk to us about the music, the rest of the music situation. Yeah, man, I just dropped this song. It's called uh, 1517 uh, Intro. The album going to be called 1517, you know. And um, the intro, I just put it out, dedicated to my granny and my uncle and my nigga OT that passed away. Um, R.I.P. to OT, man. But um, on that song, I basically said, R.I.P. to OT, I won't forget what you said, because that that dude saved my life, man. And he didn't even like know it. I mean, later on, I, you know, see me, I'm the type of dude, he passed away now, but see, I'm the type of dude, if you inspired me, I'm going to let you know when you're alive, bro. I'm not going to wait till somebody gone and tell them that you inspired me and that you saved my life and whatever the case was just off of telling me something that he gave me some game that, that saved my life forever. So you feel me? Um, I remember the last conversation probably we had before he passed away was I was just saying I appreciate you, bro, for for telling me what you told me. But that's like a big part of the song that people feeling. Um, it's it's this a a real song. It's about the real this fifteen seventeen album, bro. It's it's this is the realest album I ever did. This is all real life. This is all not gimmicks. This is all you feel me. The pain is in there. If you, if you was broken, ain't had nothing that's in there. If you fighting with your baby mama, it's in there. Everything is in there, bro. Um, from 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 mm. if you got to work a job to you got to go to jail to you got to get back up and bounce back. Everything is in the, in this album, bro. My bad, y'all. The damn juice tried to kill me halfway through the episode. If y'all watching on the E-Block Radio Network, y'all see I keep dipping off the camera. <laughs> um, before we dive into... 1517, something that you touched on is a huge thing for me. 
I love to give people their flowers while they're here. I'm not a fan of screenshot my pictures and now and I was your best friend. I was the biggest influence. I was this and I was that when I'm dead and I can't hear none of that. Tell me, give that person and let people know how you really feel about them while they're here. It's better to hear those things and know what people really think about you and all of that type shit before it's now you just seem like you're just doing it for the gram type thing. Because I hate that type shit. So I'm always big on that. Like you said, your man gave you some good advice. Always big that up and always put promote that and put that out there. And glad that you got to tell him that before he did go. So I didn't want to gloss over that. Like I said, I was half dying over here from the damn juice. But um, yeah. 15, 17. <laughs> and that type of song, too, like you said, that's dedicated to my man and my grandma. That's the pain music. That's my shit. That's the shit that I like. That sounds like slow beat and we telling a story. That's the shit that we're missing from music these days is telling a story and not just it's a party and we had, we drunk. We get it. Everybody's drunk and high at the party. But there's ways to convey that. That's what the talent is there, is how they yeah. convey and paint a picture for the person who ain't there. That's <laughs> why I like dirt. Yeah, that's why I like dirt. And maybe the thing just is with that, now that I'm kind of through my, we're not going to get off of 15, 17, but I'm gonna, this is what that probably is now. Back in the day, it was there's no way to show you all of this. So you got to paint this picture. Now we can show you every damn thing. We're going to show you when we bought the book. We're going to show you when we bought the pen. We're going to show you when we was in the studio, that we had Gatorades, that we had M&Ms. Like, we're going to show you the whole process that there's nothing to for you to imagine. So that's probably more so how you get lost on these the great storytellers of the back because it was you had to visualize it yourself, and they bought it to life for you. Damn, thought about walk myself through that one. Um, nah, for sure. I agree. <laughs> 1517. How did we come up with the name 1517? What's that? What's that? What's the story behind that one? That's my granny address. Um, so, you know, um, she passed away in May. This who on my chain right here. Um, she passed away in May of last year, man. So she meant everything to me, man. And um, I had to uh, name this out 1517. That's where we came from. Uh, you know, it's it's. It's it's my granny house, man, and um, I give her all the love and gratitude, man. So, um, you know, I had to I had to do that. Something that me and my man, uh, shouts out to Bell of the Great from the West Coast, he's from L.A. Me and him talking on the last episode that we did together and talked about how there's no more big mama in the community, in the family, and how you need those situations. You need that person who is the strength who's the conscience, who's the person who you know I got to shape up because she's here. I can't be talking like this. I can't be walking. I can't be acting. That person who makes you be better. And we don't have that anymore. And when you got somebody that is that and it makes you instantly go, nah, I had to honor and respect her because of the person that she is and because of the way that she shaped, molded, and guided my life. That's the thing. That's a thing that we lose in. So again, Give those flowers while they're there. It's a salute to that situation. As soon as you said this, my grandmom's all, all understood completely what you're doing there. Um, when does 1517 come out? Uh, 1517, like I said, the intro out right now. 1517 intro is out right now. The album, um, it, it's going to be out no later, probably like a month. Probably like a month, I'm going to have it out, just working on the videos and stuff like that. Copy that. And where can we find that intro at right now for the people who are listening to the Hot Hustle podcast? Right. The intro, uh, y'all can find that on Apple Music right now and Spotify. Y'all can find it uh, on Apple Music and Spotify right now. My bad. Um, Apple Music, Spotify, all that. Um, YouTube, all that. Throw out the YouTube for the, for the folks so that they can get on there and get over there and get them views together. Yeah, yeah. Just type in Amari J on YouTube and y'all will find find everything right there. Uh, uh, Spotify, SoundCloud, whatever it is. Uh, just type in 1517 intro Amari J. It's going to pop up. Copy that. Now, before we wrap up episode 114, Amari J, appreciate you for coming on. Like I said in the beginning, we've been trying to make this one happen for a couple months now. Um, we finally got a good connection. We finally was able to make this situation happen. Only thing yes. I'm gonna tell you is because of the story that you just gave, I need that picture of you and grandma so we can post that up the week of the week of the promo for the show. I got you. I got you. I'm gonna send it all to you. All right, now let the let the listeners know where they can follow you at though before we wrap up episode 114. Yes, sir. Uh uh Instagram, Lavish Life Mari. 
um, a- anything. Lavish Life Mari, uh, Amari J. Um, just type that in, man. You're going to find me, 1517, um, and you're going to find me. Copy that. Appreciate you coming on. That's episode 114. We are. I am hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up.